Hello everyone. Today is Friday. I just got back from school, so I thought I'd make a video for fun. And this one's going to be on DNA encoded chemical libraries, or DL for short. And this is a drug discovery method, which is what scientists use to discover new medicine. Now, let's try to understand the big underlying idea that DELs are built upon. So, in very simple terms, um, proteins, which are usually represented in this kind of squiggly line kind of manner, with several different colors. So, these are basically the building blocks of organic life or at least information in organisms. And these go from anywhere to like cell function, cell growth, those kinds of important things. And these are all regulated by proteins. And when something goes wrong with their structure, the function that they serve is also changed. For example, they can cause Alzheimer's or diabetes or cancer. All these things can be caused by proteins, or at least when they go wrong. So what DELs aim to do is find a kind of chemical represented by this circular shape. Let's draw that a bit better. So DELs aim to find some kind of chemical that can attack, in quotation marks, the protein in a way that causes the protein to lose its function and become nullified. So the way that DELs do this is by using anywhere from a couple thousand, you know, let's do K to represent that, couple thousand, any to like couple trillion. So it's a lot of like um, degrees to your library's magnitude, like how large it is in size. And Basically, the larger your library is, the higher the chance that you have of finding a suitable chemical, but also it will be harder to manage. So most people on a working on a lower scale, they just stick to a couple thousand. And so how this works, I'll go over this in a later video, by the way, is that if you, you know, zoom in a lot on proteins, you'll find that there's like these little pockets inside of them where some group of molecules or some kind of molecule can go inside of there. And then it'll be able to stay there and nullify the protein's function to some degree because it stays there. So that's basically how the chemical affects the protein. And now we'll go over how the DNA encoded part works, as well as how libraries are involved. All right, so continuing on why you would want to organize your chemicals in the form of a library, try to understand it this way. So, I mean, you've got like a very large number of chemicals and you wanna keep track of them. So there's no way you're gonna just put them around willy nilly you're going to need to have some kind of very good organization strategy in order to keep track of what's what. So the developers of this DEL method, they decided that they would use DNA as a kind of barcode similar to how books inside of libraries have barcodes. So basically imagine this. So you have a book here and this is the front side, like, I don't know, Sapiens. Let's say you have a copy of Sapiens and you got it from your library. Now that book has a barcode on this side of the book and it's usually like some weird combination of letters and numbers or the barcode could be inside like the first page of the book, but same point. You're going to need to organize it using a weird combination of letters, numbers, whatever. And what people have done in DEL is 
They've used the nucleotides of DNA, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine in different orders and combinations in order to create a tag. So tag, I'll draw it that way. And whenever you see this kind of structure, it represents the barcode or tag. So some a, a good analogy for this would be, let's say you're trying to identify your chemicals by putting a bunch of Legos together and you have four colors. You have red, orange, green, and blue. Now, these will represent the um, nucleotides of DNA. And so you're going to take these and you're going to put them in some weird order. Let's say you've got red first, yellow second, blue third, and then like green. And then it goes on randomly. So part of the problem with doing this is that you can do it in real life like very easily with Legos you can put them together and nothing will really will really happen but DNA is incredibly unstable and it's kind of like if you had a really old Lego set that's been like chewed by your dog chewed by like your brothers and sisters and it's just really not that great to play with because they don't line up together or like they fall apart right after you build whatever you're building so there's a lot of requirements for this DNA encrypt encoding and it's mostly based on thermodynamics the thermodynamic properties of uh, DNA which I'll go over in a later video maybe so basically let's go over it again so you've got these chemicals and you want to put some kind of tag on them to organize them by and all of these you have several thousands millions billions trillions of and you just really want to organize them well in a library and you're doing it all to test against some kind of um, protein weird squiggly lines that will stop diseases from occurring once you've created the correct chemical and then what you're doing is you're getting this DNA code out after it fits into the pocket this chemical and then you're going to reproduce this chemical over and over again to see if it actually does what it's supposed to do. So that's basically DELs in a nutshell for layman's. And thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.